this gonna work? I have no idea if you're really close to my face. Basically, I called Sally's Beauty and a sweet lady answered and I was like, hey bitch, I'm going through it. As you know, everyone in the world is going through it right now. How do I get bleach from you? And she was like, I get that bitch. You don't even understand how many people have been calling us asking for hair dye today. And I'm like, yeah, because we're so bored. I'm so bored. I already painted two canvases and I need to paint my hair now. So. Oh God. So I asked her if she like had the products and if they can deliver because I don't want to walk into the store and I don't want to be around people obviously because this is the first time out of my house and I'm just fucking nervous. Like my hands are shaking just driving. I know I'm safe in my car. The lady at Sally's was like, we're doing this thing where you order over the phone, you come drive to our store, you sit in your car and we'll have someone bring out the products to you and we'll set them by your car. And I'm like, that's so lit. That is so considerate. Hell yeah. I was trying to find Sally's Beauty on Postmates. That is the most LA shit I have ever said in my fucking life. But they didn't have Sally's Beauty on Postmates. So it's really cool that they're doing that. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I don't think anyone really does. I hope all of you guys are in your cozy little beds right now or on your couch. It feels so weird right now. I feel so weird and I shouldn't be touching my face. I have hand sanitizer though. Let's get it. My mom, Barb literally drove 45 minutes to this random town in Oregon and got like an eight pack of hand sanitizers and sent them to me. She was like, these are the last bundle that I found. And I'm like, hell yeah, Barb. So I just have so many hand sanitizer and I feel guilty about it. I should probably pass them out to my neighbors. I'll like leave them on their doorstep, like a cute little quarantine present. Okay, I am here and I don't really know what the protocol is. If you are one of the people that has to work right now, God bless you. And all of the doctors and nurses, angels. Okay, I just called them and they said that they were gonna come out and deliver it. So, now we wait. I'm a savage, nasty, moody, wretched. All of these TikTok songs are stuck in my head. I just have TikToks looping in my brain because that's all I do too. I'm on TikTok now more than ever. And I made so many TikToks the other day and one of them blew up. And I didn't even expect that. And it kind of like, it kind of like boosted my ego a little bit. I'm like, maybe I can be a part of this community. Oh shit, she's coming. <laughs> oh my God, I'm dead. This is crazy. Hi queen. Thank you. Aw, okay, cool. I'll be right back. She had gloves on and a mask. I really wanted to go pink, but they didn't have pink left. She was like, yeah, everybody's been coming in wanting colored hair dyes, so we don't have any more of that. And I'm like, I get it. All right, y'all, I made it home. I think I'm safe. That was scary, that was risky. My adrenaline is through the roof. I'm not leaving my house again for anything. I literally went outside for six minutes and just in my car. And I know that I need to take a shower, chug vitamin C, perhaps some electrolytes. Okay guys, it's the next day and I have my whole setup. I got, what is this? <laughs> Fuck. I don't do hair. No, this is the bleach, this is the toner, so this is the developer. Okay, I got my gloves, my paintbrush, because I don't have an actual hairbrush, so I'm using a fucking paintbrush. And my little mixer bowl, I have my whole setup. I was so ready to film this, but then I looked online just to be safe. Every single article said to lather your hair with coconut oil and sleep in it, and then the next day bleach your hair. So, I guess I'll just do it tomorrow. And I don't have a freaking shower cap, so I have to, <laughs> this is so pathetic. I have to put a trash bag over my head. I have to sleep in a trash bag. It's very fitting. I wasn't gonna do my whole head. I was just gonna do like a biolage. I just melted my coconut oil. Ah, that's so hot. But now it's on fire, so I'm just gonna wait till it cools off. And then I'm gonna apply it to my hair. While it's cooling off, I'm gonna like watch this tutorial where they like mix everything. This music kind of slaps. 
Oh, I thought she switched the song up on me because I started singing. This is just the same one. Go bleach your hair. Why does she keep doing that? She keeps switching it up on me every single time I sing. Well, stop switching up on me, bitch, or I'm gonna change the video. Why does she only have a 10? Why does she have a 10 developer? I have 30. What is the difference? I think this is fine. Okay, now this bitch is saying, use 10 or 20 volume developer. Many toners work with 10 volume developer as it's the least damaging to the hair. Great. So, this is gonna fuck me up. Fuck. Okay, now I'm not so confident anymore. She's scaring me. Okay, cute. That's cute. That's cute. Wait, is it cute? I don't like the picture version. Why does it not look cute in the picture? It's just a picture, you know? Different lighting, different angles. You're welcome, Belle. You freaked me the fuck out. My coconut oil cooled down, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna send it. I look like a wet dog. And I probably smell like one too. Also, sorry for all the background noise. My fan is on and my bathroom fan is on, but I'll make sure that those are off tomorrow. It's loud. I always forget that it's on because it's kind of like white noise. The audio probably sucks. I should do this all the time. This is nice. And it's like warm. I wish I had someone doing this for me. Christelle. Ooh. You're gonna see me at my most vulnerable state. And that is with a trash bag over my fucking head. Call me my hair. I really don't care. 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 Fuck. Care. Call me my hair. I really don't care. Yeah. Cool. All right, she is combed. Oh, it's so greasy, it feels wrong. How am I gonna sleep like this? I never wear my hair in ponytails, do I? Have I ever made a video of just me in a casual pony? I don't know why, it's just so like vulnerable. I just need, I need something, you know? It's like too like, hey, look at me. You know, I don't like that. That's sad. Was that like a sad thing to say? Like, I like my face. It's just so, like, naked. Like, exposed to the world. All right. <laughs> I should go journal after this. I have been journaling, and I think you all should be journaling right now. I think that will really help with our mental state during this quarantine. And it would be interesting to look back on the world and to, like, show our kids, like, hey, look what I suffered through. As I'm putting a trash bag on my head, great. I need to, should I, I'll bun it. I need to take a bath, you know what I mean? But I don't have a bath. <laughs> so any of you guys that have a bath, get inside of it. Right now. And use bubble bath and lavender salts. Or like a nice jacuzzi. If you have a jacuzzi, what are you? Get the fuck in there. Oh my god. This looks so bad. This looks so bad. <laughs> I'm lowering the bun so it doesn't look like what I'm thinking. It still looks like that. You know what? I no. <laughs> and I'm wearing a white shirt. Oh my god. I'm so sorry. Let's try this again and not be offensive. Looks like I just shaved my head. Honestly, it kind of a look. Should I just shave my head? Oh my god. I'll shave my head if this lockdown lasts for like three months. That's when I'll shave my head. My hair is slicked back in this trash bag. But I'll see you guys tomorrow, or in your case, three seconds. <laughs> Good night. Oh god. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> it's the next day. I'm just scared, man. I'm scared. I'm scared of change. I'm a Taurus.
so that's how it be. I wonder if my makeup looks the same. I tried to do it exactly the same as yesterday. Slept in my trash bag, but of course it slipped off because I'm a crazy sleeper. I have my wine, I have my electrolytes, and I'm ready to get started. I'm not ready. Hopefully the audio is better, I turned off the fan. I'm gonna section my hair in three parts first. Oh my god, I can't believe this is happening. What am I doing? I'm either gonna love this or I'm gonna hate it so much. There is no in between. What is that? Oh, it's my straw. Sorry, that's distracting. I mixed all this off camera and I have my paintbrush. So hopefully this works the same. I, I don't know. Fuck it, right? My mom sent me five boxes of these last week. All right, it's fine, it's fine. Everything is going to be fine. If I don't like it, no one will see me anyway, besides the thousands of people watching me on the internet. <laughs> so that's cool. Oh my god, I did it. I did it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Oh my god. Oh my god. Weird, 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 weird. Wow. Can't go back now. <laughs> I'm fine. Holy shit, okay, it's all good, it's all good. It'll turn out great, let's manifest that. All together now. It will turn out great. It will turn out great. It will turn out great. So in this video, I'm just gonna be talking about updates on my life, how I'm doing, everything about this corona shit. Oh my God, how are you guys doing right now? Cause I've been feeling crazy. <laughs> So when things get out of control, I literally don't know how to handle it. Just like everyone else. No one knows what to do right now. It's like such a weird time in the world. Before this outbreak even happened, I feel like everyone in our lifetime just never thought that this would happen in our lifetime because nothing like this has happened. So we've been just kind of like, oh, it's not gonna be a big deal like coronavirus, huh? <laughs> It'll be fine. But then once it started hitting, now everyone's panicking and I just also don't even know how to process these emotions that I'm feeling so I haven't been feeling them I was talking to my sister on the phone for like four hours yesterday I was telling her I was like bitch I haven't cried in so long like I haven't cried in months I don't even know how to access my emotions right now because I'm just so overwhelmed by ev oh my god I'm spilling everywhere my sister's a therapist and I never want to call my sister and like give her all my problems and all my shit because she deals with that every day and I always say that to her on the phone and she's like Sarah I'm your sister like I care about you <laughs> like I want to know what's going on I'm like right totally <laughs> But yeah, I was like talking to her about that and my sister is like a fucking witch, I swear. She can tap into such crazy parts of your psyche. It really made me tap into my emotions really hard for the first time and it had me realizing like, damn, I am so scared right now and I've just been pushing that in the back of my head because I don't want to panic and freak out. It's valid to be scared right now, but it's also like in a weird way, kind of comforting that we're all in this together, like the whole world. Once this is over, if the whole world doesn't come out of this more connected and more loving and more compassionate than ever before then we did something wrong because I swear I think that the universe is doing this on purpose although it's terrible and scary and like people are literally dying from this virus the world needs to be in hibernation right now and we all need to like sit down and think about what we want the springtime to be what we want to take from this time how we can grow as people and how to manifest right now more than ever realizing what we need to work on when life goes back to normal and we do have to go to our jobs every day or we do have all of our responsibilities back and that phone called my sister helped me so much it probably sounds so weird like are you a sociopath you don't know how to feel emotion like obviously I feel emotion but like when it's overwhelming emotions like this I don't know I don't even know how to handle it but I'm working on it I feel a lot better today I had that phone call with my sister after I was done filming that last part last night of me like putting the coconut oil in my head <laughs> so I was talking to my sister with a fucking trash bag on my head on FaceTime she was making fun of me I looked like a shepherd like the way that I had my phone angled <laughs> you could only see my hood and like the trash bag over my head I looked like a fucking shepherd she was like you just need a staff and you're all good where's your sheep she just helped me realize what I need to do during this time and how to make the best out of this because like it's so hard to we're all scared like how the fuck do we make something positive out of this but I'm gonna be working through it and working through my shit because I have to I'm alone with my thoughts every day and I can't ignore the thoughts you know I like try to go on TikTok 
<laughs> you know? But there's always something in the back of my head being like, you need to journal and figure out what you're gonna do when this is over and like have a plan and some goals set for you. Maybe you should meditate right now because you're feeling crazy. Everyone also, please pray for my sister right now. She still has to work and she lives in Seattle. Also, if you have a backyard right now, get in your backyard. We're the only apartment that doesn't have a balcony. Tell me why. Everyone else has a balcony. We don't. The only thing that we have is access to the roof outside of my window. So we can like sit on the roof. Before y'all come at me, it's a flat roof, okay? It's not like a slanted pointy one. But I'm scared to do that because the one time I did that, I got yelled at by the people in the next apartment complex next to us. They like yelled at me out of their window and was like, hey, some people at work in the morning. Get back in your room. And I was like, oh my God, sorry, King. I was also doing cartwheels on the roof, so I was probably being loud, so I'm scared. But also I feel like under these circumstances, people would be accepting of that. If they looked out their window and saw me just chilling on the roof, they'd be like, yeah, I get it. Like they can look out their window and do the math, see from that angle that we're the only apartment with no balcony. But whatever, I'm still grateful that I have a home. I also think it's so funny how the celebrities are handling the situation right now. Vanessa Hudgens, sweet. So cringy. I didn't watch the actual live stream. One of the T channels popped up on my YouTube recommendations and I watched that shit and I'm like, oof. And I get that she was like drunk or whatever, but like, you sound dumb. She literally was like complaining about Coachella being canceled. Like that was her whole thing. I just like don't understand this whole Corona thing. Like people are making such a big deal out of it. Like, yeah, I get it. I get it. Like people are like, Dying? Yeah, people are gonna die. But it's kind of inevitable. But like, inevitable? <laughs> what the fuck are you saying? Coachella will still be around, bitch. Like, relax. Then she did like an apology video. She didn't even really apologize. She was just like, guys, I'm taking it seriously. Like, hello, I'm in my home. Like, I'm quarantining right now. Like, I get it. It's like a huge deal. And I'm like, that's not, that's not why people are mad. <laughs> you just can't say shit like that. Just don't speak. Go sit in your home theater. <laughs> Go play some indoor basketball. Her first mistake was just getting on Instagram live in the first place. That video on Twitter of all of the celebrities singing. Imagine no possessions. It isn't hard to do. Imagine all the people. Brotherhood of man. That video, dude. I don't know who was the one that got everyone together and like send in the clips, but oh my God. I saw someone quote tweeting that video and they're like, was this supposed to make me feel comforted? <laughs> like, I'm just uncomfortable. No need for greed and hunger. I get that the celebrities are trying, but like, can you relax? Just donate and help people instead of singing, please. Post on Twitter the receipts of you donating money. <laughs> but no shade, I get like, they're just trying to bring some positivity. But I was sitting there like, what the fuck am I watching? Above us on the sky. I don't know her name. I think it was the girl that put it all together. Imagine there's no heaven. She was reposting people on her Instagram story, like of people singing the song too. And this one girl DM'd her the video of Millie Bobby Brown singing that song, saying like, you inspired me. Ooh, you may say I'm a dreamer. The fucking celebrity bitch reposted it on her story with like a bunch of hearts. You done. <laughs> you done. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> Not realizing that was Millie fucking Bobby Brown. Oh my god, that killed me. Oh, I was on The Bachelor. <laughs> 
I was on The Bachelor, bitch. It was the best moment of my life. Call me basic. Call me a basic bitch. I don't give a fuck. I've been watching Bachelor since I was a little girl with my mom and my sister and my dad. My dad fucks with that show. It was always a dream. Not to be on The Bachelor because I would literally go insane and have panic attacks every day. Bitch, I was having panic attacks at the reality house. Like, no way in hell I could ever survive on The Bachelor. Every single season, I look at the live studio audience and I'm like, how do I get there? Just one random day, Christelle comes home from work and she was like, Bitch. And I just got Christelle hooked on The Bachelor. Like, she didn't watch the show before she moved in with me, which is crazy. I'm like, you're a girl in your 20s. <laughs> we love Pilot Pete. Yes, he's stupid. He's a little stupid. Fuck, I ripped them. It's not the end of the world. Well, it kind of is, but not in this case. Come on, why is this so hard? God, two fingers keep getting trapped in one. Okay, got him. Hey kids. <laughs> All right, oh my God, I need to hurry. Anyway, Bachelor. Christelle comes home one day. She was like, we're going to the Bachelor show. I was like, how the fuck were you able to get tickets? Cause I guess getting tickets for the live show is so hard. But the only way you can get into the live show is if you know someone that works for ABC or like for the Bachelor. I guess Christelle has a friend that works for the studio that the Bachelor live show is held in, which is Warner Brothers. Christelle's friend was able to get us on the list. I'm gonna see sexy Chris Harrison in person. Like, wow. I don't even care about Pete at this point. I just want to see sexy Chris Harrison in his little suit. Always just had a massive crush on Chris Harrison, me and my sister both. I feel like he actually really cares about The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. Like, he really gives a fuck about how they feel. He just wants the best for Peter. I was freaking out. I'm like, what the fuck am I gonna wear? And she was like, earth tones. <laughs> It's like a part of the memo. You have to wear like solid colors or earth tones. And I'm like, great, what am I gonna say? Can we take pictures afterwards? Like, can I get an autograph? Like, can he sign my titties? I would tattoo Chris Harrison's signature on me and we're not allowed to bring our phones. So we had to keep our phones in the car and we get there. You had to literally sign a paper that said you didn't have the coronavirus. Disclaimer, this was before it started to break out really bad in the United States and before everyone was starting to quarantine. We had to take like a little fan quiz, I guess, for feedback on like what the show could do differently. I felt so involved. I'm like, I am in Bachelor Nation, bitch, and I have an opinion and I'm gonna write it down. And bruh. There was groups of bitches together, really, really, really hot girls, like in their 20s or like early 30s. They were all in like tight dresses and like high heels because they thought that they were gonna be on camera. The girls that were there were the girls that you know have applied for The Bachelor every single year. <laughs> they wanna be on the show so bad. They dressed up for this shit. It was so impressive. This is their moment. Right here is the highlight of their lives. Like, I'm not gonna make fun of them. Like, how could I make fun of them? I'm right here with them. It was cute. So once we were done signing all of our papers, we just had to sit in this parking structure for like an hour. And luckily they had sandwiches, like they provided Subway for us. But then this girl over the microphone was like, make sure that you eat all the sandwiches that you can because you guys won't be allowed to eat for six hours. And we're like, holy, wow, okay. Then finally, we're all in a line and we're crossing the street like we're in kindergarten. It was so cute. They have us line up against a wall outside of the studio waiting to go in. All of a sudden, we see Chris Harrison's family. Don't ask how I know that. And they walk right in front of the line. They just walk right into the studio and we're like, oh my god. This one woman and her daughter, the woman looked like she was maybe in her late 60s. And her daughter was like in her late 20s or like early 30s or whatever, but they looked like the same person. They looked like Barbie dolls, like your typical Beverly Hills mother and daughter. They were wearing the same outfit, like had the same hair, same plastic surgery. <laughs> they were like 20 people behind us. And then they somehow were like walking next to the line and they were pretending like they were like looking to see what was happening.
happening at the front but then they kind of nonchalantly scooted in front of me and Christelle like cut us in line me and Christelle were like um excuse me what are you doing and then they were like oh my god sorry no we're not cutting you we were just like looking we we're gonna go back and then we we're like okay <laughs> And then they like nonchalantly scooted behind us. So they cut the people behind us. We didn't want to like fight these bitches because they were kind of scary. And you know, that like this is their moment. So we didn't say anything, but I'm surprised the people behind us didn't say anything because they blatantly cut them and stayed there. And we were like, oh my God, these bitches are crazy. Then finally, they like let us into the studio. We walk in and we're like, oh my God, it's the Bachelor Studio. And it's a lot smaller. One of the producers is assigning everyone seats and shit and of course the producers put all of the hot bitches in the tight dresses who looked like they could be on the show they put them right behind Chris Harrison's seat so like they were visible the whole time because they were just really hot and we were like maybe we can be over there too but then they assigned us to the side <laughs> they just shoved us to the side I'm like is it my yellow dress like you told me we're earth tones I get is that an earth tone wow wait I've been like disassociating the whole time because I've been telling the story but wow, I'm really doing this right now. I don't know if I'm doing it right. We're sitting down and waiting for like another hour. It took so long just to get everyone situated in their seats and shit. These two guys were sitting next to us. I could tell that they were like straight men and they either were brothers or besties, but they were definitely like straight men who just loved The Bachelor. And they were like cute dudes, but me and Christelle the whole time were like, what the fuck? Like they just did not look like the demographic. And I'm not like shaming them for being there but they were just so fucking excited they were way more excited than me and Christelle were they were sitting on my side and I just kept overhearing them talking about how like they need to react really crazy to everything so that they get screen time and then they get showed on the show and me and Christelle were like oh my god they're so whack like they're really out here like planning their reactions and like practicing their facial expressions and then Chris Harrison comes out he looks so fine skin is so smooth. He's looking so young lately and just so fresh. He looks fucking amazing in person. Like I was creaming my jeans. So foxy. But he comes out and he just sits on the couch and he was just talking to himself. Like rehearsing his lines. While everyone else in the crowd was like watching him talk to himself. Like we were all like talking to each other still and there was like music playing. But everyone was kind of like what the fuck? <laughs> He's just sitting on the couch just <laughs> It just went on for so long too. It was cool, like obviously he has to rehearse his shit, but seeing it in person, we're like, damn, this is a TV show. There's like a teleprompter in front of him and shit. We're watching the show with the whole audience, like it's on this huge screen. Me and Christelle are living our best lives. We were laughing, we were crying, and all of our reactions were so genuine. Like obviously it would be cool if we were on TV, but we weren't just reacting so that the camera would pan to us. You know what I mean? But the guys next to us during even like a minimal scene were nothing that crazy happened they'd be like oh, what and they'd like look at each other hold each other and be like what the f like they were so dramatic so extreme it was like really cringy to sit next to when the whole show was over we realized that pete wasn't coming out because they were filming the finale the next day but you know what it's fine and we thought that chris harrison was gonna like stay after and like take pictures with everyone but he just went backstage and dipped he said goodbye to the studio audience and that he like appreciated us but but he didn't like linger and say hi and like take pics and shit. So we were like, damn, that sucked. I really wanted to tattoo his name on me. And we walk out of the studio and we're walking to our car. It's like 8.30. And while we were walking to our car, we were like, I wonder if we are on TV. Like we had some good moments. And we get in the car and I turn on my phone and my phone is just blowing <laughs> up. I go on Twitter. I'm getting so many tweets being like, bitch, were you just on The Bachelor? And just so many people were texting me. And I was like, oh my God, I guess we like made it on TV. We see the clip because people were posting it on Twitter and it was right after Barb was going wild Barb is Peter's mom about how she doesn't think that Han or that What's her face? Madison is like right for him because like she's so religious and he likes to party and like square dance I don't fucking know 
he just likes to have a lot of sex and she's a virgin. He likes to get drunk sometimes. And Madison's over here drinking apple juice. Me and Crystal were just laughing so hard at Barb because she was just crazy. But Barb like had some valid points, but at the same time it's like, bitch, it's not your life. Like let Peter do Peter. Everyone's tweeting me that video of me like freaking out at Barb. And I'm like, oh my God, that's, that's the clip that made it. And I'm happy about it. And we went home and we watched the whole show like at all the audience reactions. They didn't show the two guys next to us once, not once. And they were being so fucking extra. I'm like, bitch, that's your karma. Stop trying so hard. Just relax and be in the moment, have a good time. Like these men, I wish y'all could have been there or just seen it in person. Like they wanted to be on TV so bad. <laughs> we were like, oh, you know, they're so mad. They showed us and not them. Um, but yeah, that was like, that was the best moment of my life so far. It was magical. It was fucking magical. I tried to blend it. Hopefully it blends. I don't fucking know, man. My camera's gonna die. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna charge my camera and I'll come back to y'all. <laughs> Bye. Ah, it's the moment of truth. Well, kind of. I haven't toned my hair yet, but it'll give you a glimpse to see how we did. I'm scared.